If you're the owner of a 2015 through 2017 GT V6 or EcoBoost Mustang, and you wish you could inject some of that aggressive GT500 styling into the front end, well, now you can, thanks to the MP Concepts bumper replacement that we're talking about here today. Now this kit will include a complete unpainted GT500 style front bumper constructed from durable polypropylene along with a brand new upper and lower grille, lower chin, side canards, and all of your hardware for the low to mid $900 price point. Install according to the site it's going to get a strong 2 out of 3 wrenches on the difficulty meter here guys and take a few hours to complete from start to finish, but if you hang with me for a bit we'll walk you through that job later in the video. So this is a very popular modification with the early S550 owners out there looking to give your ride a pretty substantial facelift. Now I would argue that this option along with MP Concepts GT350 style front bumper are two of the most popular in the category and by a pretty hefty margin. Now that GT350 bumper certainly worth a look as well if you're considering a Shelby inspired front end and you should know the 350 option is actually a couple hundred bucks less compared to the 500 we're talking about here today. But this option obviously modeled after the newer Shelby GT500. And as I mentioned at the very top of this video, guys, this is actually more than just a bumper itself, right? You're also getting the upper and lower grills, a little hard to display here on my table, uh, but you're also getting the GT500 style lower chin spoiler and the canards on the side, along with all of the hardware, uh, fog light buckets, you name it, this thing is complete from start to finish. Obviously the one thing it is missing is paint. And well, obviously that's gonna be on you guys to get it color matched to your ride. But outside of that, this is a 100% complete option for your ride at home that will really do a good job of changing up the entire look. Now I have gotten a few questions about, can I use a different aftermarket grill with this bumper, say from RTR, or maybe Cervini's. And unfortunately, because the upper and lower grill openings are a little bit different, that's not entirely possible without modification. And same can be said for the lower chin splitter as well. Now outside of styling, construction is completely on par to what you would find with a factory bumper that does include a thick yet pliable polypropylene construction uh, for the bumper shell itself. ABS plastic is going to be used for things like the included grille, uh, the side canards along with that chin spoiler. Now if you really wanted to nail or complete that GT500 look for the front end, I would say pairing this bumper up with MP Concepts GT500 style hood on the site uh, would certainly be a no-brainer and again you can find that here at AM if you're interested. Now the bumper itself from MP Concepts does have a number of very positive reviews currently on the site along with a ton of customer submitted images that are definitely worth checking out. So if you're still on the fence between maybe this bumper or the 350 option, you want to get a better idea of just how it might look on your own ride, check out those customer images, man. There are a ton to look at, uh, many different color S550s, and again, you get a good sense of the fitment, uh, how it's going to look, and so forth. So again, you can find those back on the product page, uh, read up on some of the reviews, check out the pictures, and that will certainly help make your decision. But now we want to shift gears and talk about the process of getting the MP Concepts bumper uh, not only assembled, but obviously installed. Now this will include installing the grills, uh, obviously the turn signal buckets and transferring over your turn signals themselves from your S550 at home. But to give you a better idea of just how this all is going to come together, check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown right now. Tools used for this installation, 3 8 electric impact gun, clip removal tool, flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench, quarter inch drive ratchet, quarter inch drive extension, seven, eight, 10 millimeter sockets, Phillips head driver, three eighths to quarter inch adapter, and cutting pliers. First thing we're gonna do is once we've got our hood open, we're gonna remove our eight push clips under here to remove our rag cover. That'll give us access to the bolts that hold the front of the bumper or the top, or the top of the bumper on. Once they're removed, we can remove our rag cover. Now that our rag cover is removed, we're going to follow our rubber down like this. You're going to see a 7 millimeter right here in the corner. 
We're gonna remove that. Now you wanna repeat that on the other side. Now that we have our two seven millimeters removed, we're gonna remove our eight millimeters up top here. These hold the nose on the front and the whole bumper. Now that we got those removed, we'll be able to lift up on the bumper then and remove it once we get our sides. We're gonna start with our driver's side and start removing the push pins in the inner wheel well. Now that we have our eight millimeters removed up top, we'll come over to our side. There are one, two, and three push clips in here that hold the inner wheel well in. And then there's another bolt that's up inside here that holds this piece towards the fender. Now in our vehicle, we're missing some hardware, we're missing this bolt, and we're missing one of the push clips. So I'm going to get in here and pop the two out that we have. So now that I have those removed, you would end up removing one more that's up in here. And once you get that done, you're gonna be able to take your inner wheel well and pull it back like this. And once you get your wheel well back, you'll be able to get in here and right in this corner, right up in here, there would be a another bolt up in here. I think it's either seven millimeter or 10 millimeter. Once you remove that and get that out, you'll be able to grab and move and pretty much just pull the side off like that and it comes apart. And we'll remove our splash apron next and you're going to want to repeat the same procedure on the other side. Now that we got our sides disconnected, we're going to get under here and remove our push clips and seven millimeter bolts that hold this uh, shield on. Our vehicle, missing bolts, missing some push clips. So your vehicle, if you haven't touched it yet, probably have all your clips. So I'm just going to take out what we have here. That's going to give us access to undo our turn signals. And able to remove the front bumper cover. So now that I got all the push clips that we have left, I'm going to remove what screws are still in this. I think that's all of them. Now there's a couple up front. All right, so now I think I have all the screws out of it. I'm gonna remove the splash guard, just like that. Drop it down. It's going to give us access to undo our lights and be able to remove our front bumper cover. So now that we have our sides unhooked, we disconnected our turn signals. I got this bumper ready to come off. I'm going to lift up on it, get it off its tabs here. Once we do that, we'll be able to drop it down and pull it right off. I'm going to put it on the bench and show you how to remove the turn signal brackets. So now we have our bumper off, we're going to start by removing some of the stuff off of this bumper to put onto our new front bumper. We're going to remove our turn signals 
and we're going to remove some clips on the bottom here for our splash guard. So I'm going to start by removing our turn signals on the passenger side and I'm going to go through that process with you now. So now I'm going to remove our seven millimeters here to take out our turn signal. Take out these two, which hold the turn signal in place. Now I have those out. I'm going to remove two 10 millimeters up top. We're missing one, so we only have one to get out. Once we have that out, you're gonna push over on your clips and pop up the plastic like that. Same down on the bottom and your plastic holder will come right off. So now we're gonna repeat the same procedure on the other side and remove that turn signal. Now that we have our turn signals removed, we're gonna remove our clips. There's six of them on the bottom for a splash shield. I'm gonna take my cutters, I'm gonna grab a hold of them and pull up and give a little bit of a pry and do that. Now I'm going to remove the other five, same way. Just give it a little pull up like that. Now that we have those removed, now we're done with this bumper, we're going to start uh, re or start assembling our new bumper. Now that we got our new bumper on here, we're going to start by installing our mesh grill. We're going to line the holes up and we'll put our second piece on top. way we can get the holes lined up, I'm going to take my Phillips that came in the kit, the flat washer. Start a couple. Once you get a couple started, then it'll line the holes up a little bit better for you. Once we get them all started, then we'll take our Phillips, tighten them down. Now we'll get our Phillips, tighten them down. That'll install our top one. Then we'll start installing the bottom mesh grill. Take my Phillips and run them in. Now I'll run the other four in. Now 
Now we'll install our bottom mesh grill. Now we're gonna install our bottom mesh grill. Line the, the holes up. And we'll see where they all line up and are open. And we'll take our second piece of plastic, lay that on top. I'm gonna take my Phillips for the washer and get a couple of them started. Start this one, I gotta get a washer for it. So now I'll get my Phillips, I'll put a washer on that, tighten it all down, then we have both our mesh grills installed. So now that I have all our Phillips in, I'm gonna run them in with my Phillips screwdriver. This is the one I forgot the washer on, but now I got a washer on it, so we're good with this one. And we'll tighten this one down. All right, now we got them all done. Our mesh grills are in. We're gonna stick our emblem on, then we'll start on our turn signals. So next we're gonna install our grill plate. And you're gonna see that on one side, it's got a countersink for your Phillips that comes in the kit. It would be the gold plated ones. I'm gonna stick them through. Now this is gonna go on the front side and then we're gonna use these nuts that they give you with these uh, plates welded onto them to put on the back here and then we'll tighten them up. So I'm going to fish it through. Hold it there. I'm gonna start one, get one started. And then start the other one. Once I get them started, I'm gonna take my Phillips, go underneath. it in. It's 
tighten it up and I'm gonna get it centered in the grill. And I'll tighten the other one up. Now they powder coat these plates with the nuts, so they are a little tight getting on because of the powder coat. Snug them up just like that. Now we'll work on putting our turn signals in. Now that we have our grills installed, I'm going to uh, remove this plastic piece here. There's one on the other side. All I did was twist it, break it out of the way, kind of the same way we did with the center grill. We're gonna take our mesh insert here, install our turn signal from our factory bumper Take our seven millimeters, start them. I have one here that's stripped, so I'm not gonna put one in there. I'll probably end up getting a bigger screw. I'm gonna take my gun, run these in, tighten these up. Now that I have the turn signal bolted into our new uh, mesh screen here, I'm going to install it and slide it into place and push it down in so it locks into place. Once you get it down into place, I'm gonna take my Phillips here, sort it into our hole in the back, that'll hold it in. And now that we have that all into place, it's all clipped in, we'll repeat the same procedure on the other side. Now that we have our grills in place, our turn signals in place, we're going to install our chin spoiler. I'm going to use two of the bolts in the hardware. So I'm gonna line it up, start my two centers, get it in place. Take a washer and nut, get it started. Then I'll start the other one on this side. Washer and nut on that one. Now I'm going to finish installing all the bolts to hold the chin spoiler on. So I'm gonna start over on this side, start installing our hardware. It's a Phillips screw with a nut. Once I get them all started, then we'll tighten them. You're gonna be able to go around and see what holes line up. Once I get them all started, then we'll go around, tighten them, and then we'll install the wings that go on the side of this. Now we'll do the other side. 
Now we'll install the bolts on this side. Now that I have them all started, I'm gonna take my Phillips and tighten them with my 10 millimeter wrench. Now I'll tighten the other side. Now that we got our chin spoiler on, I'm going to install our clips to hold our splash guard on, and then we'll have to install our rubber seal up on the top of the nose. Now I'm going to install our clips that we removed from our factory bumper. I'm going to get it started, and then just tap it down into place. That way it, these will hold on our splash guard. So I got them all tapped down into place. Our clips are a little rusty. Sitting, once they're in place, now we'll install our side uh, spoilers that go on both sides. Now I'm gonna install our side spoilers. You're gonna see that they go sit and you'll feel them fall into the holes for the studs that stick out for them to bolt to. Now I'm gonna start our Phillips head screws, get a couple of them started. Once I get them all started, I'm gonna use my gun. Run them in.
Now that I got them all tight, you're gonna to wanna to repeat the same procedure on the other side. We're gonna to need to remove our rubber seal here from our bumper. Our new bumper did not come with it. Um, some of the clips that we have on ours are kind of getting old and beat up. You're gonna to wanna to try to remove it without breaking these white plastic clips. Take your tool, get behind them like that, pop them out. We're gonna to have to reinstall this on our new bumper. Now that we have this removed, you're gonna to wanna to get all the stuff off of the, the rubber before we transfer it onto the new bumper. Any kind of dirt. You can use any kind of cleaners if you want to get it clean. Now we'll take our rubber, transfer it to our new bumper. Now I'll install our rubber onto our new bumper by pushing our push clips in. Now that we got our rubber in, now we're ready to install our bumper. So now we're gonna install our front bumper. I'm gonna lift it up, start it into our dowels, up in top here, get a couple of them started. Once we get them all started up top, Now we'll move to start installing our installing our sides. So now that we got our front installed, we're going to install our sides. I'm going to put this up into place, push it in just like that. Make sure it's down under the headlight. We're going to install a screw up inside the fender here and tighten it up. Upon removal of the old front end, we didn't have any hardware, so I got some hardware for our car. Now we have our hardware back in. We're gonna push our inner wheel well in. Install our push pin. Now you're gonna to wanna to repeat this same procedure on the other side. Now we're gonna install our seven millimeter bolts on the ends. You might have to push on it a little bit to get it started, just to push the plastic in. Now I'll install the one on the other side. Now that I got those two in, Take our eight millimeter. So our bigger screws up top here. Next, we'll install our radiator cover. Now we'll install our radiator cover.
Now that we have that done, we'll go underneath and install our splash guard. Now that we're underneath the vehicle, we're going to install our light connections for our marker light, our turn signal, and I'm going to tie up our driving light, a fog light wire because this bumper does not have access for it. I'm going to do that on the other side. Now I'm going to hook up our connections on the passenger side. I'm going to install our turn signal, uh, marker light, and I'm going to tie up again the driving light and wrap it around here so that you don't see it hanging down because we're not using that. If you want to use some wire ties to tie it up, it's not a bad idea. Now we'll install our splash guard. So now we're going to install our splash guard. I'm going to put this thing up in place. I'm going to get it started up above the bumper. It can be a little tricky to get it up in. I find it easy that if you get it in and line the two back screws up and move it around so that the two back holes line up first. Um, once I get the two back ones started, then you'll be able to maneuver it and get the front to line up. All right, now I'll move it around and get the front to line up and then we'll start those bolts. Now I have my back two started. I moved it around enough to get the two front ones out of four front ones to line up. I'm gonna run some of these in so it stays up in the air. Now that I have those in, we're gonna put our push clips in, and then this kit has uh, another support that we're gonna put in with self-tappers. So we'll put our push pins in first, and then we'll finish with our self-tappers. Now I'm gonna install some of our push clips in place. I'll come over here and install into our frame. Now we'll be installing just a few into our body in a couple of different places. Some holes that are a little bit too big for our clips. Yeah, that one's not gonna get one. So now this kit comes with this support here that they're saying to use some self tappers in. You're gonna line it up. And what I'm gonna do get it started. They give you a bunch in the kit. I'm going to start two in the center. Make sure it's lined up. Once I get that one started, I'll do another one. gonna hold it in place. Now I'll 
put maybe 10 on each side. That's what they give you in the kit. Like I said, I'm going to start some. This is just going to give added support to the chin spoiler and the splash guard. If you want to put them all in, I think they supply you with enough. Now you're going to repeat the same procedure on the other side. That wraps up this review and install of our MP Concepts GT500 style front bumper for 15 to 17 Mustangs with EcoBoost V6. Thanks for watching, and for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericaMuscle.com.